We've had a two-month equity rally, and there are echoes of some of the silliness which we saw in 2021, with some meme stocks rallying like crazy. Now, some of us might be tempted to pile into the rally due to FOMO. However, the economic backdrop is now very different. So what would it take for this resurgence in animal spirits to continue? Now, don't forget, if you do like our content, please do subscribe to our channel. And now let's look at the stock market madness in a bit more detail. Let's begin by looking at that rally and the reasons for it. You could summarize 2022 with a fall in risky assets, such as QQQ, the NASDAQ tracker, and Bitcoin, but also treasury funds. So TLT is the long duration treasury fund. But then those things turned around in mid-June. So on June the 16th, QQQ reached its minimum point, and it's pretty much been rallying ever since. But so has every other risky asset. Now, what was the reason for that turnaround? Well, it could be that people started to believe that the Fed was going to pivot its strategy. So instead of raising interest rates aggressively, it would have to back off. Maybe that's because gasoline prices peaked almost to the day on June the 16th in the US. Maybe it was the monetary policy meeting on that day, which was the first 0.75% rate hike. Maybe people thought that was too aggressive and the Fed would have to backtrack. Whatever the reason, almost all risky assets reverse course on that day. Now let's look at some of those meme stocks. And here are some examples of meme stocks beside me. GameStop is one of them. AMC Entertainment Holdings is another. Notice how their prices surged in value in 2021, not due to a fundamental improvement of their business, but because people have been whipped up into a frenzy on social media, usually on forums on Reddit, for example, such as Wall Street Bets. And of course, nowadays, people can also buy call options, which create a kind of gamma squeeze, which pushes prices up further. Now, certainly some of that fervor had died away towards the end of 2021 and into 2022. But notice how recently there's been a pickup in the prices of those two stocks. Now, I've also shown at the bottom here the federal fund's effective rate. You've probably heard people say, don't fight the Fed. Well, if the Fed is being very accommodative with very low interest rates, then you're not fighting the Fed by buying risky assets. In fact, you could say that's what they're trying to get you to do to stimulate the economy. However, when the Fed starts raising interest rates and tightening policy, if you're still buying those risky assets, you are fighting the Fed. Now, that's usually a losing battle. So that's why I think the backdrop now is very different to the one which we had during the meme stock craze in 2021. Now, certainly not all of the meme stocks have rallied. For example, Arc K, which is Kathy Wood's innovation fund, that certainly hasn't risen as much as stocks like AMC, for example, which is up over 100%. GameStop as well hasn't risen as much as it did back in 2021. That's only up by 34%. And this is all taken relative to that mid-June turning point. The Nasdaq itself is only up 22%. But the really standout stock this time around is Bed Bath & Beyond. Now, again, this rally is not due to fundamentals. It's simply due to the fact that people have been talking about it on social media. And is this a form of stock market madness? Well, yes, it is. Another example of the excess of animal spirits is flow. Now, you may recognize Adam Newman. He attempted to disrupt the commercial real estate market and create shared working spaces called WeWork. But he overstretched himself in the prime commercial real estate market and his funding fell through. And consequently, he lost a lot of money. However, as this FT article says, prepare for the second coming of Adam Newman. And what he's planning is the WeWorkification of your home. So what he failed to do for the commercial real estate business, he's attempting to do for the residential real estate business. And certainly the memory of his first failure hasn't stopped him from getting a huge amount of funding. A venture capital company called Andreessen Horowitz has stumped up $350 million for his new venture, which is called Flow. And that's because they're thrilled by the scope and aspiration of Newman. Now, Fintwit News has drawn a nice distinction between Elizabeth Holmes and Adam Newman. Whereas Holmes created Theranos, which was a medical diagnostics company which failed and which lost $1 billion, Adam Newman lost $11 billion. 
and while Holmes went to prison after Theranos failed, Adam Newman got off scot-free and now he's raised 350 million for his next startup. So who knows, maybe Flo is going to succeed, but personally I think this is another sign of too much in terms of animal spirits. And it is another sign that there is a certain amount of market madness still out there. Perhaps thankfully, not all of the craziness in 2021 is coming back to haunt us. And one example is special purpose acquisition companies, or SPACs. Essentially these were blank check companies where you'd give a manager your money and then you'd trust them to go out and acquire another company which would in turn become very successful. From the point of view of the company which was acquired, this meant that they could get very cheap capital and also the due diligence may be less rigorous than it would have been for a standard initial public offering. And from the point of view of the manager of the SPAC, it was often very, very profitable. So almost everybody was launching a SPAC back in 2021. However, this year we've seen the issuance fall off a cliff. So these green dots that you can see on this graphic show you the number of new issues of SPACs by month. And whereas in January there were 25, in July there were none. Now the performance of a lot of these SPACs has been abysmal. A lot of them have fallen by more than 70% after the SPAC actually merged with a company. So I think a lot of us won't be sad to see the back of these SPACs. And one of the big proponents of SPACs, which was Chamath Palihapitiya, who also described himself as an ex-Warren Buffett, he certainly seems to have gone silent about his personal SPACs. And as Bloomberg Business says, that marks an unofficial end of this chapter of financial mania. Now, before we move on to the topic of whether this surge in animal spirits can continue, let me just quickly mention our membership where you get access to lots of members-only content, lots of videos which only you get access to, and you get access to Slack so you can ask a question about investing anytime you like. And if you want to learn more about that, just click on the link beside me or in the description beneath me. Now, the rally we've seen so far in 2022 is a re-rating rally. Now, remember that stocks are forward-looking. They always price based on what's expected in the future. So if we look at valuation measures, that's why I like the forward price to earnings ratio. It looks at the price of a stock or an index relative to the forecast future earnings, usually over the next year. And what's really fascinating is to watch how those forecasts evolve over time. So here you can see the forecast for 2011, which was first made in 2009, and how it evolved over time. Gradually it was rated upwards over time, and then by the end of 2011, this is where the forecast reached. Sometimes it starts too high, and it gets rated downwards, as it did in 2013. But notice how the forecast for 2023 was gradually revised upwards until recently. And over the last couple of months, that forecast has been falling. And if you look at the forecast for 2022, the same thing is happening. It's not a huge downgrade, but it's a downgrade nonetheless. So what you might expect was that equity prices would be falling. For example, that's what happened in 2008. So what you can see here is where the index would have been, the S&P 500, assuming it was at a 24 times multiple. In other words, the price of the index was 24 times the forecast earnings for the next year. And the bottom blue line here is 10 times the forward earnings. So as we move down from the top blue line to the bottom blue line, we move from a state of euphoria, where people are willing to pay a lot for the same future earnings, to very little for those earnings. So if the S&P moves down one of these notches, it means it's being derated. People are willing to pay less for those same future earnings. And that's exactly what happened in 2008, as all of the animal spirits were drained out of the market, and it entered a state of despair. So there we actually went through and below the 10 times forward earnings. But gradually over the next decade, during this period of very low interest rates, notice how equity gradually re-rated upwards. It took a knock during the pandemic when it fell to a multiple of about 14 times. But then we had the surge in euphoria following the pandemic when the multiple went up to almost 24 times. Now during the course of 2022, there has been a derating but all of the surge that we've seen recently is not due to fundamentals. Those, as we said, have been falling. The forecasts have been going down. The surge in equity prices has been due to re-rating. And that's people paying more for the same forecast earnings or even less earnings. So this is pure animal spirits, this rally that we've seen over the last two months. 
Now, why are the forecast earnings going down? Well, it's due to margins largely. Again, this is the forecast margins going back to 2011. Now, the margin is the percentage of revenue which makes it through to the bottom line in terms of profit. And currently, we're running at very high levels of margins by historic standards. However, because input costs are going up with inflation, it's unlikely those margins will stay so high. And that's why in 2022, you can see the forecast margins have been falling quite sharply. And the same is true of 2023. So that's why I think it's likely that earnings will fall or at least weaken for Q3 and Q4 of this year through to even next year. That's because inflation is likely to stay high for some time. And that in turn means we could get another leg downwards in equity. It certainly won't be supportive of the rally. Another reason people give for the rally is that the Fed's going to have to pivot or reverse its monetary policy. Now, the Fed has stressed repeatedly that in order for it to reverse its tightening policy, it needs to see compelling evidence that inflation is moving back to its 2% target. And we certainly saw inflation fall back from above 9% to 8.5% in July. Here are the individual components of the inflation basket over that 12-month period. And you can see that fuel oil, gasoline, and piped gas, that's natural gas, are big contributors to the rise. However, if we look at the month-on-month -month changes, which gives us a more timely measure of inflation, that shows that some of these energy components are now falling. So, for example, gasoline, airfares, and fuel oil all fell by about 8% between June and July. What's worrying, however, is that things like owner's equivalent rent, which tends to be quite sticky, but also things like electricity, have been gradually increasing. So the components in the basket which have actually seen rises have been broadening away from energy. And that suggests that inflation is likely to remain high for some period of time, certainly long enough to erode margins and reduce earnings for the S&P 500. The Fed will also be looking for signs of economic tightening. In other words, demand for goods and services should fall. So it must have been reassuring to see that the 30-year mortgage rate in the US surged, and that happened very rapidly. However, recently what's happened is that that 30-year mortgage rate has started falling back. It's now 5.2%. Now, what the Fed's trying to achieve is tighter economic policy to slow down the economy and get job demand and supply back into balance. So seeing something slip back like this mortgage rate would be worrying. That was just one economic variable, but if we look at hundreds, we can create something called a financial conditions index. And this is one from the Chicago Fed. So when this number's large, it means that financial conditions are tight. That's what the Fed is trying to achieve. And certainly over the course of 2022, it was moving from loose to tight territory. But notice how since mid-July, it's been falling back to loose conditions. That's not what the Fed wants to see. And if we look at the components of that index, it's split into credit, risk, and leverage components. The one which has fallen back is the one called risk. So for example, credit spreads would be part of that. And we have seen credit spreads tighten as high yield corporate bonds have rallied. So certainly this slippage is not something which will make the Fed step back from rate increases. In fact, it's going to create the opposite situation. If anything, it's going to make the Fed more aggressive in its rate hikes. So personally, I just don't buy the argument that the Fed is going to pivot. But the market just doesn't see it that way, at least not yet. In conclusion then, I think a Fed pivot, in other words, a reversal of its policy, is unlikely, at least for 2022. Before the end of the year, I suspect we're going to see earnings start to weaken. And that's because of the very high inflation and falling margins. If this rally is going to be sustainable, what I'd be looking for is the same thing as the Fed. In other words, compelling evidence that inflation is falling back to that 2% target. If that's the case, the Fed's likely to ease off the brakes. But given that we don't see evidence of that so far, I think this silliness is likely to fade. So I'd characterize 2022 as this race between margins eroding profits and inflation falling. And personally, I think that it's likely that earnings will fall before we see a substantial fall in inflation. So I think this will probably fade. We'll see a lot of this euphoria start to disappear, and we may see weakening of equity markets towards the end of the year. 
However, of course, I'm still drip feeding into my core portfolio, into equity, because it's usually not worth paying attention to these short-term tactical movements. It's usually best just to put money into the equity market and leave it there and ignore the news. Now, don't forget our offer. If you want to learn more about investing, there'll be a link about that beside me and in the description beneath me. And as always, thank you for listening.